But Solomon was building his own house thirteen years, and he finished all his house. He built also the house of the forest of Lebanon. The length thereof was an hundred cubits, and the breadth thereof fifty cubits, and the height thereof thirty cubits, upon four rows of cedar pillars, with cedar beams upon the pillars. And it was covered with cedar above upon the beams, that lay on forty-five pillars, fifteen in a row. And there were windows in three rows, and light was against light in three ranks, and all the doors and posts were square, with the windows, and light was against light in three ranks. And he made a porch of pillars, the length thereof was fifty cubits, and the breadth thereof thirty cubits, and the porch was before them, and the other pillars and the thick beam were before them. Then he made a porch for the throne where he might judge, even the porch of judgment, and it was covered with cedar from one side of the floor to the other. And his house where he dwelt had another court within the porch which was of the like work. Solomon made also a house for Pharaoh's daughter, whom he had taken to wife like unto his porch, unto this porch. All these were of costly stones, according to the measure of hewed stones, sawed with sawed, within and without, even from the foundation unto the coping, and so on the outside toward the great court. And the foundation was of costly stones, even great stones, stones of ten cubits, and stones of eight cubits, and above were costly stones after the measure of hewed stones and cedars. And the great court round about was with three rows of hewed stones, and a row of cedar beams, both for the inner court of the house of the Lord, and for the porch of the house. For he cast two pillars of brass, of eighteen cubits high apiece, and a line of twelve cubits did compass either of them about. And he made two chapiters of molten brass, to set upon the top of the pillars, the height of the one chapiter was fifth was five cubits, the height of the other chapter was five cubits, and nets of checker work, and wreaths of chain work, for the chapters which were upon the top of the pillars, seven for the one chapter, and seven for the other chapter. And he made the pillars, and two rows round about, upon the top, upon the one network, to cover the chapters that were upon the top, with pomegranates, and so did he for the other chapter. And the chapters that were upon the top of the pillars were of lily work, in the porch, four cubits. And the chapters upon the two pillars had pomegranates also above, over against the belly which was by the network. And the pomegranates were two hundred in rows round about upon the other chapter. And he set up the pillars in the porch of the temple. And he set up the right pillar, and called the name thereof Jachin. And he set up the left pillar, and called the name thereof Boaz. And upon the top of the pillars was lily work. So was the work of the pillars finished. Also he made before the house two pillars of thirty and five cubits high. And the chapter that was on the top of each of them was five cubits. And he made chains, as in the oracle, and put them on the heads of the pillars, and made an hundred pomegranates, and put them on the chains. And he reared up the pillars before the temple, one on the right hand and the other on the left, and called the name of that on the right hand Jachin, and the name of that on the left Boaz. Moreover, he made an altar of brass, twenty cubits the length thereof, and twenty cubits the breadth thereof, and ten cubits the height thereof. And he made a molten sea, ten cubits from the one brim to the other, it was round about all, and his height was five cubits, and a line of thirty cubits did compass it round about, and under the brim of it round about there were knops compassing it, ten in a cubit, compassing the sea round about. The knops were cast in two rows when it was cast, it stood upon twelve oxen, three looking toward the north, and three looking toward the west, and three looking toward the south, and three looking toward the east and the sea was set above upon them, and all their hinder parts were inward. And it was an handbreadth thick, and the brim thereof was wrought like the brim of a cup with flowers of lilies. It contained two thousand baths. Also he made a molten sea of ten cubits from brim to brim, round in compass, and five cubits the height thereof, and a line of thirty cubits did compass it round about. 
and under it was the similitude of oxen which did compass it round about, ten and a cubit compassing the sea round about, two rows of oxen were cast when it was cast. It stood upon twelve oxen, three looking toward the north, and three looking toward the west, and three looking toward the south, and three looking toward the east, and the sea was set above upon them, and all their hinder parts were inward, and the thickness of it was an handbreadth, and the brim of it like the work of the brim of a cup, with flowers of lilies. And it received and held three thousand baths, and he set the sea on the right side of the east end, over against the south. And he made ten bases of brass, four cubits was the length of one base, and four cubits the breadth thereof, and three cubits the height of it. And the work of the bases was on this manner. They had borders, and the borders were between the ledges, and on the borders that were between the ledges were lions, oxen, and cherubims, and upon the ledges that were and upon the ledges there was a base above, and beneath the lions and oxen were certain additions made of thin work. And every base had four brazen wheels, and plates of brass, and the four corners thereof had undersetters. Under the laver was undersetters molten, at the side of every addition. And the mouth of it within the chapiter, and above it, and the mouth of it within the chapiter, and above, was a cubit. But the mouth thereof was round after the work of the base, a cubit and a an half, and also upon the molten of it were gravings with their borders four square, not round. And under the borders were four wheels, and the axle trees of the wheels were joined to the base, and the height of a wheel was a cubit and a half a cubit. And the height of a wheel was a cubit and a half a cubit. And the work of the wheels was like the work of a chariot wheel. Their axle trees and their knaves and their fellows and their spokes were all molten. And there were four undersetters to the four corners of one base, and the undersetters were of the very base itself. And in the top of the base was there a round compass of half a cubit high, and on the top of the base the ledges thereof and the borders thereof were of the same, for on the plates of the ledges thereof and on the borders thereof he graved cherubims, lions, and palm trees, according to the according to the proportion of every one, and addition round about, and additions round about. After this manner he made the ten bases. All of them had one casting, one measure, and one size. Then made he ten lavers of brass. One laver contained forty baths, and every laver was four cubits, and upon every one of the ten bases one laver. And he put five bases on the right side of the house, and five on the left side of the house. And he set the sea on the right side of the house eastward, over against the south. He made also ten lavers, and put five on the right hand, and five on the left, to wash in them such things as they offered for the burnt offerings they washed in them. But the sea was for the priests to wash in. And he built the inner court with three rows of hewed stone, and a row of cedar beams. Furthermore, he made the court of the priests, and the great court, and doors for the court, and overlaid the doors of them with brass. And Hiram made the lavers, and the shovels, and the basins. So Hiram made an end of doing all the work that he made King Solomon for the house of the Lord, the two pillars and the two bowls of the chapters that were on the top of the two pillars and the two networks to cover the two bowls of the chapters which were upon the top of the pillars, and four hundred pomegranates for the two networks, even two rows of pomegranates for one network, to cover the two bowls of the chapters that were upon the pillars, and the ten bases, and ten lavers on the bases, and one sea and twelve oxen under the sea, and the pots and the shovels and the basins and all these vessels which Hiram made to King Solomon for the house of the Lord were of bright brass. In the plain of Jordan did the king cast them, in the clay ground between Sokoth and Zartan. And Solomon left all the vessels unweighed, because they were exceeding many, neither was the weight of the brass found out. And Huram made the pots and the shovels and the basins, and Huram finished the work that he was to make for King Solomon for the house of God, to wit the two pillars and the pommels and the chapiters, which were on the top of the two pillars, and the two wreaths to cover the two pommels of the chapiters, which were on the top of the pillars, 
and four hundred pomegranates on the two wreaths, two rows of pomegranates on each wreath, to cover the two pommels of the chapiters, which were upon the pillars. He made also bases, and lavers made he upon the bases, one sea and twelve oxen under it, the pots also, and the shovels, and the flesh-hooks, and all their instruments, did Huram, his father, make to King Solomon for the house of the Lord of bright brass. In the plains of Jordan did the king cast them, in the clay ground between Sokoth and Zaredathan. Thus Solomon made all these vessels in great abundance, for the weight of the brass could not be found out. And Solomon made all the vessels that pertained unto the house of the Lord, the altar of gold, and the table of gold, whereupon the shoebread was, and the candlesticks of pure gold, five on the right side, and five on the left side, before the oracle, with the flowers, and the lamps, and the tongs of gold, and the bowls, and the snuffers, and the basins, and the spoons, and the censers of pure gold, and the hinges of gold, both for the doors of the inner house, the most holy place, and for the doors of the house, to wit, of the temple. And he made ten candlesticks of gold according to their form, and set them in the temple, five on the right hand, and five on the left. He made also ten tables, and placed them in the temple, five on the right side, and five on the left. And he made an hundred basins of gold. And Solomon made all the vessels that were for the house of God, the golden altar, the golden altar also, and the tables whereon the shewbread was set. Moreover the candlesticks with their lamps, that they should burn after the manner before the oracle of pure gold, and the flowers and the lamps and the tongs made he of gold, and that perfect gold, and the snuffers and the basins and the spoons and the censers of pure gold, and the entry of the house, the inner doors thereof, for the most holy place, and the doors of the house of the temple were of gold. So was ended all the work that King Solomon made for the house of the Lord, and Solomon brought in the things which David his father had dedicated, even the silver and the gold and the vessels did he put among the treasures of the house of the Lord. Thus all the work that Solomon made for the house of the Lord was finished, and Solomon brought in all the things that David his father had dedicated, and the silver and the gold and the instruments put he among the treasures of the house of God.